Okay, so what happens in the kidney? Let's go in a bit more detail. We'll go one by one. So number one point, our number one point was bicarbonate reabsorption, right? So this is a PCT cell. PCT is the site of the most bicarbonate reabsorption. However, it does get reabsorbed at the, the, the loop of Henle, DCT, and CD. Uh, 99, as I mentioned, 99% of bicarb filtered bicarbonate is normally should be reabsorbed. Now, what happens? What's going on? This is the PCT. You have carbon dioxide and water freely available. It gets combined in the presence of carbon, carbonic and hydrase, which is the enzyme facilitating the forward reaction, H2CO3, carbonic acid. The carbonic acid immediately de decomposes into uh, hydrogen and bicarbonate, okay? This hydrogen, just, just follow this uh, highlighter now. This hydrogen now uh, basically is secreted uh, as part of a antiport mechanism with sodium. And if you remember, I mentioned this when I was discussing sodium reabsorption at the PCT under sodium handling by the nephron. Okay, if I remember, I'll, I'll put a link here <clears throat> uh, for you to uh, go and visit that uh, particular uh, uh, lecture. So sodium hydrogen antiport mechanism is an important antiport at the PCT. Okay, it reabsorbs sodium and uses this energy to secrete hydrogen. This hydrogen, once it's in the lumen, guess connects with what? With the incoming filtered bicarbonate. And remember, we are saying it's filtered. It's an important distinction. We're not saying it's new. Okay. So this filtered bicarbonate is coming in. It was minding its own business, but uh, suddenly it was attacked by hydrogen and hydrogen combined with it and formed, well, you know it now, you know the story, H2CO3 which then dissociated into carbon dioxide and water. And this loop basically is established and it goes on and on and on at the PCT with the resultant, this bicarbonate, which is basically this bicarbonate. So now you understand. If you stop this bicarbonate coming in, this whole reaction will stop, agreed? So this bicarbonate is this bicarbonate. And this basically gets filtered, uh, reabsorbed across the basolateral border into the blood. So this way you reabsorb your 99% of the bicarbonate uh, from lumen into blood. Okay, this is one of the main points. Uh, some, some extra points about this is carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. These are diuretics, a, a class of diuretics. Again, uh, I'll be uh, recording a dedicated uh, short video uh, on diuretics, uh, but a footnote here of, of on carbo, carbonic and hydrase inhibitors, uh, acetazolamide is an example of it. Uh, it basically inhibits uh, this transporter, this antiporter, and, uh, 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 and stops uh, sodium reabsorption. So sodium along with water is uh, just uh, goes through the PCT in the lumen further on and is excreted. So by this, in this way, it, it, this, this drug basically uh, has a diuretic action. Uh, hence it uh, increases the sodium excretion, okay? Uh, and it's given in certain patients who have ECF overload, a volume overload. Okay, and then there is uh, another thing which I mentioned in the same lecture when we were discussing sodium reabsorption in the sodium handling of the nephron is volume contraction, is, is a, contraction, a contractional colosis. So when ECF contracts, what happens? When there's ECF contraction, volume contraction, ECF volume goes down, okay? GFR goes down. When GFR goes down, the filtrate entering the lumen, the amount goes down the velocity also reduces. When the velocity of this uh, fluid, which is passing through this cell is reduced, sodium hangs around here uh, a bit more than it usually does. You want that? Decrease ECF volume, decrease GFR, decrease amount of fluid, less in velocity passing through the PCT <clears throat> in this neighborhood of this antiport, mecha uh, antiport mechanism uh, sodium hangs around a bit more, stays around a bit more, uh, and this basically increases the reabsorption of sodium 
because it will facilitate the binding of sodium because it's hanging around here. It's staying around here a bit more because of the decreased velocity. And this reabsorption, since it's coupled with hydrogen secretion, this in this scenario, you will end up secreting more hydrogen than you usually do. Okay. Uh, and this extra hydrogen will be lost in the urine. So this hydrogen is being lost in the back in the backdrop of ECF volume contraction, i.e. decrease in ECF volume here has caused loss of hydrogen. Okay. Now, if you lose hydrogen net in an, in a, uh, uh, everything is electroneutral, right? So hydrogen and bicarb are in a balance. Now you have basically tilted that balance. You've disturbed it. You are excreting more hydrogen than you normally do. What will happen in the body fluids? There will be alkalosis. So this is where we, we, this term comes up, contraction, alkalosis. Okay. So this is an important point to note that in ECF volume changes, you have a acid base disorder. This is actually a very cool question from a, with a good student uh, to, uh, uh, in, in, a, in a viva, in a, in a oral uh, question and answer session. Uh, contraction alkalosis connects the ECF volume concept with an acid base disorder. Uh, and to put a cherry on this complicated case, cake, I beg your pardon, is if you basically create this uh, alkalosis uh, and the contraction, the decrease in volume is uh, being made by uh, uh, vomiting. Vomit is, vomiting is interesting in the sense that excessive vomiting uh, basically leads to a loss of volume and what else? A loss of HCL from the stomach, right? So vomiting, unlike dehydration or blood loss or this, that, the other, losing volume by, by, uh, the, by vomiting, excessive vomiting, will not only uh, get rid of volume, ECF volume, but also will create alkalosis by getting rid of the chloride, the, the acidic ions, right? So this particular uh, 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 metabolic alkalosis is difficult to treat. It's difficult to manage. Why is it difficult to manage? We will talk about this in the third installment of this series of acid-based disorders. But remember that we mentioned it here because when we go there, I will uh, uh, recall this whole thing and volume contraction over there. Okay. 